Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Schwarzman from Princeton with Urology Care Alliance. PSA stands for prostate specific antigen because it's a substance that's created in the body only in the prostate, but it can leave the prostate and go into the bloodstream and be easily measured with a blood test. It's important because virtually all men with prostate cancer have high levels of this PSA substance, whereas men without prostate cancer often have lower levels. In addition to PSA testing, a, a finger examination of the rectum is still done uh, because of the small percentage of, of men who might have prostate cancer with a normal PSA level but have a hard nodule uh, or lump in their prostate. If either the patient has a high PSA level or a hard lump in the prostate, they need further testing because both tests can have what's called false positives. That is an abnormal result, but they don't really have, but they don't actually have prostate cancer. So a further testing needs to be done to actually see if they have prostate cancer. The further, further testing is a prostate biopsy. Sounds worse than it is. It's done with a needle. It doesn't require an incision. It's done through the rectum, which obviously is not uh, pleasant, but fortunately it's not very painful. Uh, even though it's not very painful to have a needle inserted from the rectum into the prostate, local anesthesia is typically used so that most patients have virtually no pain. It's done with an ultrasound guidance. The ultrasound is performed with a ultrasound probe that's about the size of a finger, so it feels like a prolonged rectal examination. And through that probe, a, the spring-loaded needle is inserted. The probe allows for an image of the prostate on a monitor, on a screen, and the, the, the device offers a dotted line on the screen where the needle is actually going to go into the prostate and the uh, urologist doing the biopsy can aim his needle at different areas of the prostate to do a biopsy. The biopsy is very, the piece of prostate, that's the biopsy, is very tiny, but under a microscope, a pathologist uh, usually can easily either identify that cancer is present or easily identify that there is no cancer present in the prostate. And because the piece of prostate is so small and there's very little discomfort, a number of pieces of prostate are taken at a biopsy session to increase the likelihood that it'll be an accurate biopsy. And biopsies have proven to be very accurate. Uh, it's unusual uh, to miss a significant prostate cancer with this type of needle biopsy of the prostate. As far as when a man should have a PSA test uh, and how it's interpreted, uh, one of the important things is the age of the man. First off, prostate cancer is extremely uncommon under age 40. Uh, it's, it's not that common between age 40 and 50, and it's more common as men get older but especially after age 50. It was found years ago that uh, African-American men often get prostate cancer younger than white men, so it's recommended that African-American men begin getting PSA tests around age 40, whereas a white man with, who has no one else in his family with prostate cancer can wait until age 50. It's generally recommended to have a PSA test each year, even if the test is normal, because prostate cancer can always develop after the person has a normal PSA test. If a person has an extremely low PSA, 
a urologist might recommend the test be done every other year instead of every year. As far as how to interpret the test, age matters again. Younger men tend to have lower PSAs, and even younger men with cancer tend to have lower PSAs. Older men, the opposite. So the reference range that's typically used for men under age 55 would be an upper limit of 2.5. It's nanograms per deciliter. For older men, for example, a 65-year-old man, the normal range is a little more liberal, up to 4.5. And for a 75-year-old man, the normal range goes up to 6.5. In addition, there's a, a way to interpret the PSA using a trend in PSA levels over several years. So it has a title of PSA velocity. Normally, the PSA level increases slightly year to year, uh, typically from non-cancerous growth of the prostate. But if it increases more than would be expected for non-cancerous growth, that could be a sign of prostate cancer, even if the level is normal. So the changes in PSA year to year are important for early diagnosis of prostate cancer. Uh, in addition, a urologist may use a, uh, a way to look at the PSA level where it's the ratio of the PSA to the size of the prostate, and that's called the PSA density, and there are normal ranges and abnormal ranges for PSA density. The higher the PSA density, the more suspicious for prostate cancer. So uh, there's, there's lots of ways to use the PSA to try to find a prostate cancer early in a curable stage. So in conclusion, I would say that uh, the PSA test, the prostate specific antigen test, has been extremely helpful in diagnosing prostate cancer when it's still curable. It's a simple blood test. Uh, I would think that you would ask your family doctor or internist when you are having other routine blood tests, annual blood tests, to include a PSA test if you're at the right age, um, that it would be appropriate. And uh, I think the, your family doctor or internist would be happy to include that blood test with the other blood tests. If you had questions about the result, uh, you should feel free to contact uh, your internist or family doctor or a urologist uh, for more detail about it. And of course, if the test was abnormal, I'm sure your family doctor or internist would refer you to a urologist for further evaluation.